The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All-Hit Radio! Welcome to the X-Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio. Let me see. Star Cable and Ustream, 1-800-610-7035, worldwide toll-free. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. My guest this hour is Alan Sloniker, and Alan is with the Center for Paranormal Research and Investigations. He is the Regional Director for Central Virginia and the Public Affairs Officer, a native of the city of Richmond. Alan grew up in a Victorian-era home in the city's downtown. It was there, Exonation, that he had his first brushes with the paranormal. Alan was exposed to the city's history and lore at a very early age. Now, that sparked a lifelong interest in history and the paranormal, which ultimately led him to join CPRI in 2007. In joining CPRI, he was thrilled to find a group that approached the study of the paranormal in such an interesting and professional manner. In addition to working as the public affairs officer for CPRI, Alan also serves as investigator with the Central Virginia Regional Team. Alan has a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Virginia Commonwealth University with minor courses of study in sociology and urban planning. He has spent nearly 20 years involved in the public safety field, including search and rescue, EMS, and law enforcement. Alan has spent the uh, last 13 years serving in law enforcement and currently works as a criminal investigator. He currently... Uh, His interests include almost everything involving history, especially World War II history, collecting and reproducing sci-fi movie props, costumes, traveling, and reading. And joining me now is Alan Sloniker, who is with the Center for Paranormal Research and Investigation, also known as CPRI. And Alan, welcome back to the X-Zone. How are you? Good, sir. Very good, Rob. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always great talking to you. you and I were talking off air about the the weather. It's over one hundred degrees where you are in Virginia right now. It's oh, nine. Yes. It's ninety one where we are in Hamilton. And, and here's a question going into the commercial break that we have to take in about a minute from now. Does the weather play a part in uh, paranormal activity? Um, there there are some theories that indicate that that it uh, indeed can. Um, mm-hmm particularly this time of year in in this part of the United States, we get a lot of um, sudden thunderstorms. And as you know, thunderstorms bring with it uh, a high degree of lightning, electrical activity. And one theory is that um, paranormal phenomena can actually feed off of the buildup of electrical activity in the atmosphere. And that connects to the theory that... um, Paranormal activity is, you know, electro mm-hmm. electromagnetically based. Alan, stand by, good sir. You and I have to take our commercial break. Great having you with us this final hour of tonight's show. Exo Nation, Alan Sloniker is our special guest, regional director for Central Virginia of the Center for Paranormal Research and Investigation. Their website is www.virginiaghosts.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. In two minutes, as we continue here in the Exxon from our studios in hot and steamy Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I mean, it's hot and steamy outside. In here, it's a nice and cool 68 degrees. I'll be back. Don't go away. (laughs) 
Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. This is Johanna Carroll, host of Dialogue with Divinity on the X-Zone Broadcast Network. While walking along Kanapali Beach in Maui this past year, I kept discovering all these shells and coral in the shape of hearts. My Dialogue with Divinity was very simple. Do you want me to do a retreat to heal people's hearts in Maui next year? And of course, the answer was yes. As a master spiritual teacher, I am offering you a neat retreat called RISE, May 8th through the 12th, 2017, and the chance of a lifetime to rest at a five-star resort for five days and experience a spiritual renewal of your heart and soul. Kanapali is one of the top five beaches in the world. This stunning resort has undergone a $40 million renovation. I walked the entire property, checked out the room choices on your behalf, and I must say, it is stunning. Our conference room faces the ocean with sliding glass doors. Maui is known as Mother Maui because it is a soft, gentle, healing energy. In the embrace of Mother Maui, you will feel yourself rising from the limitations of an ordinary life to an extraordinary journey of peace, bliss, and harmony a greater sense of clarity. Our RISE retreat ignites renewal in the sacred elements of air, water, earth, fire, and wind. There's plenty of free time to enjoy all that Maui has to offer. A small deposit is required now to reserve your space as this retreat, it will sell out. For more details, please go to johannacarroll.com and register today. Aloha, and I'll see you in mystical Maui. We're talking about ghosts, hauntings, things that go bump in the night. We're talking with Alan Sloniker, who is the regional director for Central Virginia, and he's also the public affairs officer for the Center for Paranormal Research and Investigations. Their website is virginiaghosts.com. Alan, tell us about CPRI, history, structure, and how you guys operate. Okay. Um, CPRI was founded by our director, Bobby Atcherstein, back Mm -hmm. in 2000 um, as a paranormal research group. But what we wanted to do that was slightly different than a great many groups that are out there today is that we wanted to approach the study of the paranormal from a scientific standpoint 
uh, using very traditional investigative methods with uh, an emphasis on documenting solid evidence that hopefully could be reproduced under laboratory settings. So you're taking the uh, scientific approach? Very much so. Yeah. That, that is most definitely what we strive for. Um, we um, are broken into uh, five different regions around the state. Mm -hmm. uh, each one is headed by a regional director, and um, they head a, a regional team. And the majority of the uh, work that we do involves complaints that uh, come in from citizens uh, around the state, sometimes out of state, um, complaining of uh, some sort of haunting activity, if you will, uh, in their home. And um, what we will do is uh, assign a regional team to investigate uh, that allegation. And um, we are also, um, for those of uh, you that are familiar with uh, the Sci-Fi Channel's Ghost Hunter show, mm -hmm. their um, organization is called TAPS, the Atlantic Paranormal Society. Right. And they created a network of groups called the TAPS Family, which is uh, groups around the United States that operate off of similar protocols and uh, share information. And we are a part of the TAPS Family here in, in the U.S. and uh, also get case referrals from them as well. What does it take to become a paranormal researcher with CPRI? Um, I think it, it takes an open mind. Um, but we're also looking for people that are um, objective, um, skeptical. I mean, CPRI represents, uh, you know, a, a pretty broad spectrum of people of uh, varying backgrounds and beliefs, and mm -hmm. it, it'd be very hard to put your uh, finger on, on, you know, what is CPR, but CPRI believe, because you one member may answer one thing and the other may answer something else. Um, but uh, what we do is, is we, we try to put our personal beliefs aside um, and, and approach every case objectively and skeptically um, and to seek out any possible explanation other than a paranormal one before we can actually say that something is indeed possibly paranormal in nature. Um, that's the type of people that we're looking for, um, that, that can operate professionally, can operate under stress, um, that can deal with the public very well. Um, and uh, again, we represent a broad spectrum of backgrounds. Um, myself, as well as a couple other members, um, are police officers uh, with extensive backgrounds in law enforcement. And a lot of that skill set applies mm -hmm. to um, what we're doing here. We have people with engineering backgrounds. We have a medical doctor. We have a Ph.D. psychologist, um, computer scientists, um, and uh, just average um, run-of-the-mill folks, too, um, people with even just retail backgrounds. Um, we have educators. Uh, it's, it's a pretty broad spectrum. Alan, what brings a person to want to investigate the paranormal? What's the draw? What's the pull? I think it's the, the, the curiosity uh, about the unknown. Um, I, that, that's what drew me. Um, I love a good mystery. Um, mm -hmm. I love a kind of a classic whodunit. Um, um, and, and I think if you, if you question people in, in this field uh, about that, most of them will tell you that at some point in their life, um, they had some sort of brush with what they suspect was the paranormal. Um, and I, I know I did, um, and that always left me kind of wondering, what, what, what is that? Um, why is that? Um, and as I became an adult, um, I, I, it never kind of went away, and I finally found myself uh, involved with CPRI, now actively uh, looking for answers. Something you said before uh, that I have never heard from any other paranormal investigation organization or investigator before is that you go out there 
with a skeptical point of view. Now, that's totally different from any other organization that I've had on the show. Why do you take that approach? Well, and, and just to be clear, you, we're going out there from an, a skeptical standpoint. Yes. Um, we're, we're not going out there to uh, debunk or, or, or to ridicule um, in, in any way. Um, but I think it's, it's very important whenever you do this type of research mm -hmm. that even if you, you believe in the phenomena, I personally believe in the phenomena, right. um, but many, many, many times you will find that um, you get a, uh, a, a case and that um, the answer isn't paranormal at all. Um, on, a, on a personal level, I mean, I tend to think that the paranormal exists, mm -hmm. but it is a, you know, ghostly phenomena, if you will, is, is, is rare. Um, and that many, many, many times um, what happens is um, mistaken identity, misidentification. You have some people that, that genuinely have some sort of um, mental health issue. Um, and, and then also, too, you find, at, at least here in the States, there's, there's such a glut of, of paranormal programming yeah. um, that I think many, many times people so desperately want to experience the paranormal that they put all of their personal, personal objectivity aside. And, and we have to be aware of that and, and be able to put that aside to, to look at the facts of a case. What is the percentage, based on, on your own investigations within the CPRI, when you folks have been called out or have gone out to do an investigation, that the paranormal is actually present? Would you say it's 60%, 50%, 40%? Actually, I would say probably less than 10%. Wow. Less than 10%. Um, I think we fielded, last time I, I got the statistics on that, I think was the 2009 report where we had fielded uh, in excess of 700 calls for service. In a year? In a year. 700? And, yes, sir. And um, some of those are calls simply seeking information. Mm -hmm. um, a great many of those are seeking case requests. And... Um, we go out, and again, many, many times there's a there's a reasonable explanation. You, you do have uh, that very small percentage of, of the hoaxers, mm -hmm. um, which is something, thankfully, we, we don't run across very often at all. Um, again, you have many people, I think, that truly want to believe that what they're experiencing is paranormal. Um, but once you whittle it down, I think we're down to under 10%. Now, when you get that 10, that under 10%, you know, that's some pretty, pretty good, pretty interesting stuff. Um, but um, it's still a relatively small number. And, and that's what I would caution a lot of uh, paranormal investigators, particularly people looking to get into the field, um, people looking to start a group, mm -hmm. is, is be mindful of that. Yeah. All that goes bump in the night necessarily isn't the paranormal. No, sir. What about these stories that, that, that people hear about TVs going on by themselves, garage doors opening by themselves, doors opening by themselves? Have you found in the past that there are logical explanations for this? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. I mean, look, take, a, um, take a simple television remote. Mm -hmm. um, that's operating off of a radio signal. Same right. with a remote uh, a car garage door opener. Um, it, it's quite possible that there's some sort of interference. Uh, you could have a neighbor two doors over uh, that's on the same frequency, and uh, they hit their button and you know possibly turns your TV <laughs> on. I mean that that's a little far fetched, but th the principle is sound, yeah. and and that is one of the things that we would immediately, uh, on a report like that, seek to eliminate as a, as a possibility. 
What is the most common uh, report of paranormal activity that you at the CPRI get? Um, it, it's kind of hard to put your finger on on one thing. Mm-hmm. I think sounds are a very uh, common um, type of uh, report. Um, shadow figures is another very common type of report. Um, and then uh, I would say in the past year we've gotten a lot of um, a lot of email uh, with people reporting um, what would be called uh, phone calls from from beyond, if you wow. will. All right, um, you and I, you Alan, you and I have to take a commercial break, and I'm sorry for cutting you off, my friend. Fascinating conversation with Alan Sloniker. This is why I like Alan because he's an investigator. He doesn't, he doesn't go in for the woo-woo factor. He's just like the guy from Dragnet. Facts. Just the facts. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. For more information, www.virginiaghosts.com. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Explanation, Alan Sloniker is our special guest. He's the Regional Director for Central Virginia and the Public Affairs Officer for the Center for Paranormal Research and Investigation, that's CPRI. Their website is www.virginiaghosts.com. Alan, when the CPRI gets a request from a citizen requesting your assistance in helping investigate a paranormal activity, what is the protocol that the CPRI goes through? Okay. Um, The first thing that's going to happen is that that uh, complaint is going to get forwarded to the appropriate regional director, depending on where it is in the state. Mm -hmm. Um, From there, the regional director will uh, make contact with the complainant um, and usually by phone and have a discussion, get some additional um, details, um, try to feel out the complaint, get get as much information as possible. And from there, um, we will um, likely proceed to what's called a POI, a preliminary on-site investigation um, where a, uh, either the regional director or, or a designate along with um, at least uh, one or two other investigators because we never just send one person um, will go out and um, sit down do a face-to-face interview with the complainant and as many witnesses as are available um, we will get the complainant to show us around the area where the uh, activity is supposedly taking place. Um, we may do a EMF sweep of the home to uh, try to identify any um, possible sources of um, high EMF fields. Uh, one of the things that we have found is that old or poorly insulated wiring gives off a very high EMF field, and that's one 
uh, thing that could possibly cause an individual to mistakenly experience um, haunting phenomena. Um, and based on our findings from the POI, and, and there's there's some written tests that we give to mm-hmm. um, uh, some personality tests that we take and keep on file, and if, if we have to have a um, medical professional or a, uh, a psychiatric professional review that, then we have those there. Um, we also give them a questionnaire that is helpful in kind of gauging somebody's susceptibility to electromagnetic fields, which ties into um, what I just spoke about, about how that can possibly affect one's perception. And then we sit back, we look at everything we've gathered, and based on our findings, um, and, and again, one other thing we may do is a, a, an EVP session. Um, and again, based on our findings, we'll make a decision as to uh, whether or not and when we are going to come back for an FOI, which is a full on-site investigation where we'll show up with a larger team and more equipment and um, do what we do and hopefully collect some good evidence. How long does the average paranormal investigation take? That depends. Um, There's no concrete Mm -hmm. um, answer to that one. Many, many times we will find that somebody will come to us reporting um, paranormal activity, and you know the first question you ask is, well, when does this happen, and, and how often does mm-hmm. this happen? And they may say, well, something happens, and then three months later something else happens, or there's, n- there's absolutely no predictability to it, and... Um, there seems to be perhaps some large gaps of time between incidents. So the thing that we always ask them is start a log. Just leave it on your kitchen table. Something happens, write it down, date, time, what you uh, experienced, um, and who was there to witness it. And we may ask them to do this for a couple months um, and hopefully we can go back, look at that log, and maybe we've established some sort of pattern, and that will better tell us when might be a good time to conduct a full investigation. Um, But the thing is, sometimes people, too, come looking for uh, a concrete answer um, or or even to have us stop Mm -hmm. whatever is going on. Really? Um, And the thing is, um, the first thing I tell somebody as an investigator is that Sometimes you come out with more questions than you do answers. Um, And we can kind of help you come to terms with and coexist with what's going on, but we're no way empowered to to get rid of it. We're we're not ghost busters. We can't remove it from, from your environment. But we can help you better understand what's going on and hopefully live with it. What has been the most perplexing investigation that you have been on with a CPRI? We had um, an incident um, took place in uh, the northern portion of the state um, where this individual was um, being scratched. Um, Scratches in threes. The the scratches were um, uneven, so it didn't look like there was a you know, like a, a prong, like like if you were a, to scratch yourself with a fork, mm-hmm. then the scratches themselves would be equidistant. Yes, um, they w- they weren't all like that, and they were all over this individual's body, literally all, and and, and actually leaving permanent scars. Um, and um, we um, went up, and um, this, this individual said that they were not only getting scratched, but were being physically assaulted pulled off their bed, pushed, um, and um, we investigated this case up one side and, and down the other um, and, um, you know, reached into our bag of tricks with just about everything and could not come up with, with anything um, at, at, a, at all. And unfortunately, um, the phenomena was such that um, – None, uh, none of us, myself included, ever witnessed this phenomena actually happening, um, which, which is frustrating because, you know, based on what we came away with, 
mm-hmm. you know, it could go either direction. Um, but was there, in fact, was clearly going on? Did you find any evidence that that there might have been a paranormal connection, or was this being perpetrated by the person themselves? I couldn't conclusively say. No way. I can say that we did not come away with any evidence of paranormal phenomena, and we went so far as as to um, spend um, 24 and 48 hours at this person's home um, glued to their side (laughs) um, for as long as as we could, given our our personal schedules and our work schedules, um, and, and couldn't document any paranormal activity. But yet, this was going on. Now, whether the person was doing it themselves or this was paranormal in nature, um, difficult to say. But something clearly was going on. What has been your most... Oh, let me see. What has been your most positive proof that you've seen during an, inve- during an investigation that, yes, indeed, this is paranormal and this is why it is paranormal um i I think when i was first on your show we talked about uh, a recent trip to waverly hill yes uh, sanitarium in Mm -hmm. kentucky and um we were so excited uh about that as as a group that um, we actually returned to waverly hills um uh, memorial day weekend uh, of this year so back at the end of may and um it, it was less active this time, but I think, and we're still reviewing evidence from that, and that's a long process. Um, but um, that place, in, in my opinion, my mm-hmm. personal opinion, um, I think is most definitely haunted. And it's a fabulous piece of property uh, to begin with, but I think it's most definitely haunted in my personal opinion. Um, the first time we went there, um, we did see um, shadow, end of shadow persons, people, um, uh, an apparition that we watched for a group of us of about what, I guess it was seven or eight of us watched while we sat at the end of the hallway as this apparition kind of moved about for a, a solid 20 plus minutes. Now, what, what kind uh, of apparition? Very wispy, um, humanoid form. Uh, but not kind of together, it's very, very wispy, and went kind of back and forth, side to side, across the hallway. And while this was going on, we had uh, shadow activity. Uh, shadow was blocking out um, light coming in at the end of the hallway, shadow figures peeking around door frames. It, it, was, it was crazy. It was the craziest thing that I had experienced uh, since I started doing this. Um, and we've gotten um, we've gotten uh, some EVPs out of that property uh, that were very interesting. When we went um, this last time, um, we didn't have any apparition activity, but we did have some uh, in- interesting noises. Um, um, we had um, if those familiar with the Waverly Hills know that the fifth floor was the children's ward. And our team was up there, and um, we had three balls laid out, and we were trying to get something to interact with one of these balls. And um, I was uh, urging something to to move the ball, kick the ball, Mm -hmm. make it move. And uh, on four separate uh, occasions in just over a five-minute period, one of the balls, only one, started wobbling about and I don't mean just like a little teeter I mean actually wobbled about very distinctly very visibly and the floor is such that you can go and stand next to each of those balls and jump up and down as hard as you can and not create any movement it's also shielded from the wind there um, so that was that was very interesting so tell me why um, again, is it we're still going through evidence uh, for that uh, most recent investigation um, but that that's just such a cool piece of property. It's, it's a wonderful place to go. I, I could go there every week and, and get something out of it. Alan, why, why is it that whatever the paranormal entities are that are at at this location, why do they stay there? What is the attraction for them? Why don't they move on? Or 
why stay there? Or are these electromagnetic anomalies that are just clamped into the time-space continuum or the magnetic loop that is resonance throughout that entire property? How do you explain the, that? The, the truth is, is, is we, don't, we don't really know. Um, there's, there's a lot of theories. Um, there's some very wild theories. There, there's some very, um, what I think are scientific theories. Mm-hmm. One deals with the concept of um, residual haunting and that um, when you see or you hear something that uh, is, is ghostly in nature, if you will, um, you're not actually seeing the spirit of a dead person. You're, you're seeing an image or a sound from the past that for whatever reason is actually playing out on the present, much as you would project a movie onto a screen. Right. And, um, you know, there's a lot of us, myself included, that, that believe that um, perhaps as um, traditional science starts to better understand uh, uh, quantum mechanics, mm-hmm. quantum theory, space and time, that um, there may be a legitimate traditional scientific uh, explanation for that at some point. Um, I don't know what to say. I, I mean, on a personal level, I, I think some of what we're, we or, or other teams experience at, at a place like Waverly or another location, you know, may be residual in nature. Um, right. They may be actually spirits of, of deceased individuals. Um, I, I think that I, I'm very open to that idea. Um, and then there's some more um, radical ideas that uh, you have spirits, uh, inhuman spirits, be they good or be they evil, that are um, uh, you never walked the earth. They they are just kind of part of the universe, if you will, and um, you're, you're angels and demons, if you will. Right. Um, again, C- CPRI doesn't really take a position as to what this is we're, we're happy to present any number of theories and um but it, it's very you know, what is it i, I, I couldn't conclusively mm. say stand by you alan. alan you and I, you and i have to take our final break for this hour explanation alan sloniker is our special guest he is the regional director for central virginia and the public affairs officer of center for paranormal research and investigations That's CPRI and their website, www.virginiaghosts.com. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we do our wrap-up for tonight. Monday, July the 5th. Now Tuesday, July the 6th. It all depends on where you're listening to us. Anywhere on this great, big, beautiful planet of ours. We'll be back on the other side. Don't go away. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, 
mental, and spiritual for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. And welcome back, everyone. Wow, where did the four hours go? My guest this hour is Alan Sloniker. We're talking about ghost hauntings, things that go bump in the night. He is the regional director for Central Virginia of the Paranormal Research and Inve- I'm sorry, it's Center for Paranormal Research and Investigation (CPRI), and their website is www.virginiaghosts.com. As always, Alan, a great pleasure having you on the show. Um, here, here's a question that I get asked to the, whenever I'm going to be speaking to someone like yourself or another investigation group is what should someone do if they think their house is haunted? Well, first of all, don't panic. Um, while the phenomena may be frightening at Mm -hmm. times, um, generally speaking, it, it, can't and and won't do you any harm so don't panic um secondly try to do some of your own investigation and and part of that is is to to look at um what's going on objectively look around your home and try to look for things that may be um may be the cause of what you're experiencing that that are not paranormal yeah um, you know, whether it's a, a knock in your plumbing or, or bad wiring or whatever. Um, but then I go back to keeping a journal. Keep a good journal. Um, document what's going on. Because for somebody like myself coming in, to be able to look at that mm-hmm. from the start, that, that that's a great jumping off point. So I, so I would imagine what you do is you you rule out the possible before you start looking for the impossible, or in this case, the paranormal. Correct. 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 Here, in another, here's a quick question. We've got less than a minute, Alan. Um, so, evil. Have you ever seen any anything demonic or anything that would be classified as evil or dangerous within the paranormal? Um. I personally have not, um, thankfully, Mm -hmm. Uh, but um, on on a strictly personal level, I I believe that that type of phenomenon uh, can and does exist. Uh, Again, that's my personal belief, but um, that is probably, uh, and thankfully so, more rare than um, is is the rarest of, of paranormal phenomena. Alan, you and I have to say so long for now. I do want, again, want to thank you so much for joining us. Always a great pleasure. Quickly, give out our, your website to our listeners. Thank you, Rob. Um, our website is www.virginiaghosts.com, and CPRI can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Alan Sloniker, thank you very much, and my regards to all the good people at the CPRI. Thank you, Rob. Well, that's it for tonight, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow night at 10 o'clock as once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the X-Zone. To all our affiliates worldwide and satellite providers, thank you for keeping the X-Zone on your stations, your satellite networks, your feeds, wherever you are. And always, X-Zone Nation, until tomorrow, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night, everyone. But you can't stay here. Thanks a lot, Alan. Great talking hey, Rob, to you again. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, buddy, if anything comes up that you need to get out there, let me know. We'll get you right on. Certainly, certainly will. Two, two quick questions. Sure. One, when can I hear this? I'll be sending you the information. Uh, I'll send you the, uh, the iTunes and podcast information within the next hour and a half. 
Oh, great, great. And then, when can we watch your Paranormal Cop show? That is uh, just being, uh, it was purchased by the CBC. As soon as I get their broadcast schedule, I'll know. You know how it goes. If the network buys it, you work for them. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, eager to see that one. I can guarantee you it's it's quite good. I've seen uh, I've seen a couple of the uh, finished uh, segments. They're really interesting. Great. Are y'all going to come to the U.S. with it? Uh, not this year. Next year, we're looking forward to it. Okay. Great. Alan, Great. Well, take fantastic. Ca- hey, listen. Take care of yourself. And as uh, from one uh, from.